Praise the Lord. A few notices before I go to the word. testimony to remind us that this church prays every day half past six in the morning on the prayer line it's only 30 minutes if you are going to work you can put it on and get doing the things that you've got to do and listen and pray if you are not going to work and you are not busy then you can be fully attentive in 100%. But you will hear one word that will encourage you. And you will pray a prayer that God will answer. The, the, and so please, I want to encourage everyone to be part of the Open Heaven devotional that we have at 6.30 on the prayer line every day. Also, we have study and prayer on Saturday nights at, six, at 8 p.m. And we have Holy Communion at 8 p.m. on Monday. There are lots of people in church who probably have one sickness or the other in their bodies. If there's anyone that should be at that Holy Communion service, it should be you. Even I got healed on that Holy Communion service online, not a physical one, online. And on that day, I thought I was ministering to people. I was the one leading and I got healed. So anybody can get healed. So please be there. Also, on the first Friday of every month, physically here, we have a Holy Communion service at 6 p.m. So please attend that as well. If you don't attend any weekly activity, please don't miss the communion services. And quarterly, we have a praise, power, and prophetic, prophetic night, like the one we had last Friday on a quarterly basis, I want to encourage you, please attend. These programs are not put together for the pastor. If it was for me, I would do it in my house. But it is for us, for all of us. Please attend as we take our journey in Christ together. Right, two very important notices. The Evangelism Week. Our annual Evangelism Week starts on the 13th of um, May 13th to 19th, which is uh, next week actually, 13th to 19th. Normally we have, we are out in the town throughout the week, Monday to Saturday. And so I want to encourage you, if you have a day off, if you have some time, if you are not working, please come and be part of the evangelism of our town. Be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is Emmanuel? There are some sheets um, there. Can you, can you circulate these sheets for people to sign which day they will come? We are going to have a prayer booth. So if you can pray for people, there's a prayer booth. There's a listening booth. If you are good at listening, and you can do a bit of counseling. And there's a listening booth. There is games. And we need people to man all these booths. There's a books and tracts table. And we are going to have street preaching. And we are also going to have sketchboard preaching. About eight years ago, we were taught how to do sketchboard preaching. But I think I'm the only one in church now who was trained at that time. The guy who trained us is coming during our evangelism week. He'll be here Monday to Thursday training on sketchboard preaching. If you, if you feel it's daunting to stand in front of the people to just preach, come and learn how to do the sketchboard and how to use the sketchboard to preach. And God will use us in our town to witness to people in Jesus' name. And so what we will do Monday to Thursday is we'll be here at 10 o'clock. 10 to 11 will be sketchboard preaching training. And then 11 o'clock we go out there for the evangelism. Please sign your name on the sheets that are going around. There are two types of sheets going around. There is another one for the social action week. So please look on the top to be sure of the one you are signing. On the 27th of 
May, from the 27th of May to the 2nd of June, we have the Social Action Week. The leaders have met and we have decided what we are going to do for social action. One, we are going to do litter picking around the market and around some residential area. And so we are going to have our t-shirts, Grace Chapel t-shirts, whichever one you've got, if it's the 10th anniversary one, or the, the purple one, or the yellow one, or the black one that we have had over the years, please come and we're going to have these vests as well, and we're going to do litter picking around our town. And then we're also going to be giving out um, underwears and gloves to the homeless people. So any homeless person that we see, we give to them underwears and gloves, and we also do that from the um, Hope Hub and Soup Kitchen as well. The other thing that we'll be doing during this week is we're going to be doing the gardens of the elderly in the community. And so you can help us if you know any elderly lady or elderly man who has a garden, will be mowing their gardens. And we're also going to contact the council to find out who we can help and render these services to. Um, if you have a lawnmower, please come. If you have a, a, what do you call it, garden scissors, whatever it is that you've got, Please bring them. If you have no garden equipment or tool, come and let us do the work together. If all you can be doing is to pack the grass, it's enough. And so let's come and show, do good works and show the town that our God is good, that our God loves everyone, and that he actually really does care. Please sign up in the sign of shades for both the Social Action Week and the Evangelism Week. And God bless us all as we serve our community, as we are witnesses to our Lord Jesus Christ in the town, and as we show the love of Jesus to the people. God bless us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and for your grace in our lives. We can stand here and talk about, and talk about be witnesses unto you or showing the love of Christ through social action to the community because you went to the cross because you died because you rose again because in your mercy you called us to be your children to be partakers in your kingdom because you saved us we give you praise for this in the name of Jesus. As we go into your word this morning, Lord, we ask that you open our hearts to receive your word, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let our hearts, O oh God, be fertile grounds upon which your word will be sown, where it will bear fruits, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask this morning, Lord, grant unction, grant anointing, grant utterances. Let the entrance of your word bring light and understanding to our simple hearts. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 This morning, we are talking on the topic, finding grace. Finding grace. Immediately, I can see how some people will be thinking, is that theologically correct? Because we know that grace is a gift. So if we say finding grace, is this really a correct thing to say? It is. Because the Bible says so. Please turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4. four and I'll read verse 14. Sorry, I'll read only verse 16 actually. I'll read 14 and 15 later. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says, I'm reading the New King James Version. It says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and do what? And find grace to help in time of need. Let us therefore Come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy 
and find grace to help in time of need. If you look at this scripture, immediately you will find that it is answering the question of how, where, why, and when. You will find that this scripture tells us how, how to come to the throne of grace. And then you find that it tells us where to come to. He tells us why we are coming to that place. And then it tells us when to come. This scripture, verse of scripture, is an invitation by the Lord to come before him, to come before the throne of grace. And this verse of scriptures tells us these four things. How, where, why, and when to come to the throne of grace. In this scripture, we will find the terms of the invitation. You will find the terms of the invitation from the very first word, if it is well. If you are reading the King James Version, and in other versions, maybe the third word or so, where it says, therefore. That scripture says, therefore. If it says, therefore, it means that it is speaking about as to the premise upon which the following sentence is being made. He's talking about the basis for the next statement. And so he's saying in the scripture, therefore, therefore what? Come boldly. What does it mean by therefore? Why is it say, saying therefore? We will talk about it in a minute. Now, but the first thing we see in this scripture, it says, come boldly to the throne of grace. And so the first question we are answering is, how do we come? How do we come? The scripture says, boldly. We come boldly. And what is the basis for our boldness? Why should we come before the throne of God boldly? Normally, we don't have confidence. Normally, sometimes we feel guilt. Normally, sometimes we feel that we are not worth coming before his throne or before his presence. Sometimes we feel like you know, we shouldn't go before him. We are, we, are, we are frightful. We are afraid. We fear. Because of us, not because of him. So why is he saying, come boldly before the throne of grace? Again, when he's saying boldness, saying boldness here or boldly here, he's not talking about bold face or bold face. He's not talking about uh, um, a false appearance. It's not talking about a make-belief. It's actually talking about boldness. But this boldness does not come from us, does not come from you or me. It does not come from what you do or what you can do. It's not come from the fact that you are righteous. It doesn't come from the, from the fact that, from your own credentials. You cannot approach the throne of grace with your own credentials because that will not be enough. So what is he saying? He said, come boldly before the throne of grace because the basis for your coming is actually not you. It's not what you can do. It's not what you have done. It's not who you are. It's not the kind of what you can, you know, the kind of person you are. It is based on his credentials. So when he says, come boldly before the throne of grace, not because I am a good person, but because of his own credentials. Some people come to the Lord with their position in church, 
their position in the society. Maybe I am an MP. Maybe I am a pastor. Maybe I am a worker. Maybe I'm a gifted person. Maybe I have a certificate in preaching. Maybe I have a certificate in counseling. Maybe I have a certificate. So you know some people go to healing schools and they have some certificate in healing. And so they come before God with a certificate of healing. With the credentials that they have. But this scripture is saying, let us come boldly before the throne of grace. Why? Because how? Because of his credentials. Now I'm going to read verse 14 to verse 15, which talks about the reason why we should come before God boldly. It says, See that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And then he goes ahead, says, therefore. So what is he saying here? Seeing. Now seeing, for those of us that know English, is a continuous text, te tense, isn't it? It doesn't say see. It says see. Continuously see that because you and I have a great high priest who has gone through heavens, Jesus Christ. He says we have a high priest that can identify with our weaknesses and our sufferings on all points because he was tempted on all points. Therefore, It is not about who you are. It's actually not about what is happening to you. It is about the person that has gone ahead of you. It is about the person that you have got in the throne of grace. It is about the person that is going to respond it's about the person that is going to call you to liberty and to freedom. The high priest was to approach God in the Holy of Holies for the children of Israel. I imagine, in fact, I know that the children of the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, and all of them, it will not even cross their mind that the high priest was going into the Holy of Holies for them. Hello? Hello? Am I making sense to someone? He went to the Holy of Holies for who? For you and for me. And because he has gone, you and I, you and I can come boldly. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, once a year, on the day of atonement, the high priest will go into the Holy of Holies to make atonement for the sins of the nation. If he entered properly, then he will come out alive. That is prepared and cleansed. Because he will have to first of all offer sacrifices for himself before going before the Lord. But if he did not all enter properly, the Bible says, if you read from Leviticus chapter 16, that he will die. And the people will have to pull him out with a rope. Jesus is not just another high priest who will go before the mercy seat and die there. No. Rather, he is our great high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 6. Rather than entering the holy of holies in the temple, the Bible says he passed through the heavens in his ascension into the very presence of God. And so he is before, he is on the throne of grace. Jesus is our great high priest 
unlike the human high priest, he entered the presence of God and the father said to him, sit at my right hand. Where I will put all your enemies as a footstool for your feet. The earthly priest would dare, would not dare sit in the Holy of Holies. But God, the Father said to Jesus, sit on my right hand. <clears throat> and so today, when you go before the throne of grace, he is right there. And when you say, when you approach the throne of grace, he stands there as a high priest and he's saying, let her through. Amen. And he's saying, let him through. Amen. Because this one I died for. Amen. Because this one is my own. Amen. And so he said, come boldly before the throne of grace. Because the one that is there is your savior. The one that is there is your redeemer. He will not turn you back. Instead, he will say, let him through. Because he is your high priest. The high priest prays on the behalf of the people. Intercedes on the behalf of the people. Because he is your high priest. He is the one that is going to say, let him through. And so, you know that he's not going to turn you back. You know that he understands in full what you are going through. You know he's the one that has the solution in his hands. You know he's the one that has the answer to all the questions. And so how do you go before him with boldness? I remember many years ago, we had guests at home. And we were doing, Pastor Lima was away. And so it was just me and our friends that came and so we were doing some Bible discussions during the day. And then my son came and asked a question. And I answered him and he went away. And then the Bible study continued. Incidentally, on that day, we were discussing Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to verse 16. And when we finished, one of my friends said, do you notice what happened, just happened? I didn't even realize what they were talking about. I said, what? He said, do you realize that even though you were leading the study, when your son came in, you stopped. You listened to him. You gave him the answer he wanted. He went away. And then you continued the study. Guess what? I actually did not realize that that happened. And suddenly, the penny dropped. This is how God takes us. This is what he does with us. And we saw it in the scripture that we read this morning in Isaiah 30 verse 18. That is eagerly waiting to be gracious to us. He will stop, put everything on hold to attend to his child. He will put everything on hold to answer that question, that prayer, that call. He said, while you are still speaking, I will answer. He said, when you call me, I will answer. And so when you go before the throne of grace, go with assurance in your heart that he will answer. You know, sometimes we think, oh, God doesn't understand. Hello? We don't put it to words, but our actions say that, you know, God actually doesn't understand what I'm going through. I've had somebody even say it to me before. That, you know, God doesn't understand. He said, you don't understand. I said, maybe I don't understand. Then she said, God doesn't understand what I'm passing through. I said, you are wrong there. He does, because the Bible says in verse 15, that he went through it. Everything that we are going through, he went through it all. He was tempted on all counts. He understands our weaknesses, our sicknesses, our infirmities, the depression, the rejection. Is there anyone that was rejected as much as Jesus was? No one. 
a whole nation rejected him. His own people. You know, sometimes we say, if everybody rejects me, my family will not reject me. His, whole, his own people rejected him. The one that could have stopped it said, I wash my hands off. Stood on the fence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next moment you want to go to the throne of grace, that scripture is saying, Isaiah 30 verse 18, that the Lord will rise and say, let him through. That voice of liberty and freedom will ring through in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In Daniel chapter 10, if you read verse 13, when Daniel prayed, the Bible says that the prince of Pasha withheld the angel that was sent with the answer. And then he now said, but Michael, one of the princes, Michael, one of the princes, you know, there are two types of principalities. There are principalities that are loyal to God and there are principalities that are loyal to the devil. The word principality actually comes from the word prince. Now, he said, Michael, one of the princes came to set me free. And I'm thinking, if an angel needed help, you will need help. Daniel prayed and heaven released the answer. But a negative principality held back the answer. And God had to send his own principality to set him free. What am I trying to say here? That there are powers that will not let you go or do anything until they hear his voice. The voice of the high priest. Until they hear what he has to say when he's saying, let him through. Let him go. Know that whenever you ask heaven for something, there is a battle in the spiritual. And we cannot be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. There is a battle in the spiritual because the power, the, the uh, uh, power of the prince of air will withstand it. Do you have and are you connected to the high priest who will say, let him go? That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13, it says, therefore, put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to withstand, to withstand, to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. How are you approaching the throne of grace? Is it in a beggarly fashion? Is it with guilt in your heart? Is it with doubt in your heart? Is it with fear in your heart? Or is it with boldness? Matthew, boldness and pride is not the same thing. Boldness that I'm talking about is because you know that God has got your back. You know that he's sitting on the throne. You know that he has gone to heaven ahead of you. You know that he paid the price. You know that he's been through all that you are going through and so he understands your situation. You know that God will answer. You know that he will let you through. But pride is when we appear before the Lord. Like the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18. Who appeared before the Lord. And stood and prayed. In verse 11. Says God I thank you. That I am not like other men. Who are extortioners. Unjust, adulterous, 
or even as a tax collector, I fast twice a week. I give my tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off, the Bible says, will not even raise his eyes to to heaven, but beat his breath saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Coming before him with boldness is not the same as coming before him with pride or with your own righteousness. What the Pharisee was doing was coming with pride. God, I fast twice a week. I pay my tithes. I'm not like other people who do this and who do that. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, where do we come to? It's easy. It was written in the scripture. It says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. And so we come to the throne of grace. We come to the place where God and man are to meet. We come to that place in prayers where, with faith where we can meet with God. We come to the throne of grace because of Jesus. The throne of God's justice is now the throne of grace because of the finished work of Calvary. When we come before the throne of grace, we are assured that we will not be turned away. Many people think of God's throne as similar to the principal or the headmaster's uh, office. Thank you. We see the, the throne of grace similar to the headmaster's office. Who remembers the headmaster's office? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nothing simple or nothing good came out of behind those closed doors of the headmaster's office. You were either there to be disciplined or to be told off. But the throne of grace is a place to obtain mercy, not judgment. The throne of grace is a place to obtain freedom. It's a place where you have freedom of speech. It's a place where you have special privileges. It's a place where you have been given a card that says, admit to the throne room. It's not a place where you can be turned back. It's not a place where you are going to be judged. It's a place where you are going to receive grace. It's a place where you are going to receive mercy. He will rise from his throne to show us mercy. The Bible says. He will rise from his throne to be gracious to us. Hallelujah. Now the third question is. Why are you coming to the throne? Why do you come? Why do you come to the throne of grace? Our text for today says. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace. And so this, why, this is why we come to the throne of grace. One, to obtain mercy. When you come, the first thing you receive is mercy, which is a prerequisite for grace. The entry door to grace is mercy. It is only when you have obtained mercy that you can find grace. It means that grace is not just on the surface. You go through mercy to find grace. That we may obtain mercy. That we may receive pardon for our sins. There is mercy for the taking at the throne of grace. As Jesus Christ tasted death for every man. So every man may go in to that propitiatory and take the mercy that is suited to his degree of guilt. Mercy refers to pardon of sin. Mercy refers to being released from the judgment. From the judgment that is due to us. That is mercy. Mercy introduces us to grace. Mercy introduces us to grace. The Bible says in Romans chapter 9 verse 15, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. 
and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. The Bible makes us to understand that those of us who did not have mercy, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 10, who were not a people, we have become a people of God. And who had not obtained mercy, have now obtained mercy. You will obtain mercy at the throne of grace. Why do we come to the throne of grace? One, to obtain mercy. Secondly, to find grace. You can be a member of Grace Chapel, speak about grace, sing about grace, but it may not experience grace. I pray that each and every one of us we experience grace, starting with a saving grace and grace that enables us in the name of Jesus. Now, this scripture talks about finding grace to help. It means that the assignment of grace is to help. Anytime grace is introduced, we receive help. We receive divine help. The Bible says that the grace, 2 Corinthians, I think 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says that that grace is sufficient for us and for everything that we do sufficient grace is found before the throne of grace and is sufficient grace is found in only Jesus if you look at John chapter 1 verse 14 John chapter 1 verse 14 the Bible says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That scripture says, full of grace. Grace is found only in Jesus. And Jesus is full of grace. If I may ask, what are you full of? Are you full of grace? Or are you full of self? Are you full of grace? Or are you full of pride? Jesus was full of grace. And then go down two verses. Verse 16 of John chapter 1 says, Of his fullness we have all received grace for grace. That is, the next level of grace. The next levels of grace can be received from Jesus. From the fullness of Jesus, you receive grace for grace, grace upon grace, different levels of grace you receive from Jesus. And grace and peace is multiplied to us in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our, for our God. Hallelujah. Grace can be multiplied. So, we go before God, the throne of grace, to obtain mercy, and then we go before the throne of grace to find grace. To find grace. To find grace for what? That scripture defines it. It says to find grace to help. Is there anyone in this room that can say, I don't need help? And I will tell you straight away that you're actually deceiving yourself. Because every one of us need help at any point, certain points in time of our life. And then, what does the scripture say? Our last question. Question number four. It says, when do you come? When do you come? Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in the time of need. So when do we come? We come in the time of need. One of the modern translations of the Bible says that we can find grace to help in the nick of time. Exactly when you need it. Not before. Not after. Everyone needs to come before the throne of grace to, to, I, I mean, throne of grace, to obtain mercy, to find grace, to help in the nick of time. God give, gives grace when we need it. God answers us at the perfect time. He's never late. He's never too early. God's answers are always perfectly timed. If we can trust in his timing, if we can wait for him, 
His timing is perfect. His timing is correct. His timing is never too late and is never too soon. Hallelujah. And I'm sure that a lot of us have testimonies in our lives of when God had turned up for us at the nick of time. When he had turned up for us exactly when we needed. And when we think back and think, oh, do you know this is the right time? If he had come earlier, maybe a different thing would have happened. And it should not have been this good. The Bible says he makes all things perfect in his own time. All we need is to wait for his time. What I'm saying today is that where it comes to grace, there is, it comes with a frame of time. It comes with a particular time. Do you want to work out the things in your life by yourself? Or do you want to depend on grace? If you are going to depend on the grace of God, there is a timing. And all God is asking you for is to hold on. Trust him for his timing. He will never come late. He will never come late. He will not even come too soon so that you are not destroyed. We give you praise, Lord. In conclusion this morning, I want to say to us, it's a wonderful thing to be able to come boldly before the throne of God. It's a wonderful thing to know that the person you are coming to is your own high priest. Imagine that you have a case in the court. And your lawyer is also the judge. Who do you think will win the case? The lawyer that is representing you is the judge. So the other party has lost, haven't they? We come boldly before the throne of grace knowing that the lawyer, the solicitor, the lawyer and the judge is the same one person. And that's the reason why we can come boldly before him. Knowing that victory is assured. Amen. Knowing that answers will come. Amen. Knowing that solution will come. Amen. It is a wonderful thing to realize that before him I can have freedom of speech. Amen. Do you know that the rulers of the world, when you go before them, you have to watch what you say. Amen. You actually do not have freedom of speech. The constitutions of the world say that you have freedom of speech, but do you? There are things that you will say and they will put you in prison. Yes, they say that you have freedom of speech. But before his throne, you actually have freedom of speech. Hallelujah. You know, I was going through Exodus chapter 5 this weekend. And I saw Moses. After the children of Israel have, you know, the Pharaoh increased the work given to the children of Israel who were in slavery in Egypt. He told the taskmaster, stop giving them straw. Let them go and look for the straws themselves and let them come and do the work but they must still produce the same quota. And so the work became harder. And so when they saw Moses, they said you are the cause of our problems. You are the one that has put us inside this problem. You should have left us in our slavery. Hello? You should have left us in our bondage. We did not ask you to help. Now you have given us trouble. And then Moses went before God. God said, okay, go back to Pharaoh. And go and tell him, let my people go. Guess what Moses said to God? Moses said, why have you put trouble in the lives of these people? He's talking to God. <laughs> this is the person that was sent by God to go and free them. Because the people spoke against him. Then he looked at God and said, why have you put trouble in the lives of these people? And I want to ask you, why did you send me in the first place? 
people are no longer listening to me, so you are on your own. If you read that scripture, God did not make a comment about what he said. Why? Because Moses had freedom of speech before the throne of grace. Instead of God saying, eh, I sent you because, or I have not put trouble on them, he said, go to Pharaoh and go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. He said, what I will do to Pharaoh, Pharaoh will drive the people out by himself and say, please go. Freedom of speech. You have freedom of speech before him. He will not, he, do you know he doesn't misunderstand understand our speech? He doesn't, your brother can misunderstand you, your father can misunderstand you, your mother can misunderstand you, your best friend can misunderstand you. He does not misunderstand what we say. And he does not come to the same level to complain about us when we are complaining about him. Instead, he releases the solution. Would someone like to go before the throne of grace this afternoon? Jesus, our high priest, is at the throne of grace. His delight is to answer our prayers. He is the right person with the right experience to approach. Because he feels our pain, he can sympathize with what we are going through and so we can come boldly before him and come as often as we want. This afternoon I want us to go boldly before the throne of grace and pour out our heart to God. One thing I'm sure of is that you will not be turned away. Let us pray. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whatever it is that has made you in the past to think that you do not have a right to speak to him, Jesus nailed it to the cross. But God has given you a card. There is a sign on your chest saying to be admitted to the throne of grace. He will not turn you back. And so this morning, what is it that you need before the throne of grace? What is it that you need from the Lord? What is it that you want to ask the Lord for? He says, come boldly. Don't come timid. Don't come fearful. Don't come guilty. Don't come feeling condemned. Come with confidence. Come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Even if your thoughts are that I do not qualify, you can obtain mercy. Even if your thoughts are that I'm not worthy, you can obtain mercy. And then you can receive grace. And one of the meanings of grace is enablement, divine enablement. And so you can receive divine enablement. You can receive divine abilities. One of the meanings of the word carries that is translated as grace is also anointing. You can receive anointing to accomplish that that you need to accomplish. Is it grace for life? Is it grace for your health? What do you need grace for? Is it favor for job? It's all within grace. And it's all available at the throne of grace. Will somebody pray with their hearts? Come boldly to the Lord this afternoon and pray your heart out, asking the Lord and telling the Lord, 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 thank you for the privilege to come before the throne of grace. The Bible says when he died on the cross of Calvary, the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the holy place was torn in two. And so we can confidently and boldly come before the Lord, come before the throne of grace. What is that matter? It has been there for 
a long time. To the point that you have now gotten used to it. You are used to it. And you think it's part of life. It is not part of life. Go before the throne of grace. And say, Lord, today sort me out. Lord, today deal with it. Lord, today solve the problem. Lord, today solve the problem. And if what you want to go before the Lord for is to know him better. I want you to go before the Lord this afternoon. And say, Lord, grace. Grace to know you more. Grace to experience you more. Grace to experience you deeper. Grace, oh God, for divine insight. Grace, oh God, for divine revelation. Grace, oh God, to know your person. Grace, oh God, to know your ways. Make sure you are praying. Am I the only one praying in this room? Grace, oh God, to know you more. Grace to continue to hold on, oh God, until the day of your appearing. Grace, oh God, not to faint. Grace, oh God, not to fail. Grace, oh God, not to quit. Grace, oh God, to finish the race. Give unto me in the name of Jesus. Grace, oh God, to finish the race. Grant unto me, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I come before the throne of grace, oh God, this afternoon. That I might obtain mercy. That I might find grace to help. This is in the time of need. This is my time of need. Lord, this is my time of need. I need heavenly support. I need divine support. I need divine open doors. I need divine help. I need divine healing. I need divine bed breakthrough. I need divine breakthrough. I need, oh God, favor in my life. I need favor in my life. I need heaven to respond. Restoration by grace. In the name of the Lord. 
Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We magnify your holy name. Rapo second in the Do not fear. Grace will carry you through. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. For those who came to not come on Friday night, you missed. But I'm going to share a scripture. And that's the last thing we will do before I take my seat. Zechariah chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 7. Okay, from verse 6. He says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and it shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know what the mountain is in your life. Mountains have problems, issues that is, is, uh, is, it looks as if it's impossible to solve or to move. And that scripture says in verse 7, Who are you, O great mountain, before we say, Rebbe, we shall be made a plain. And it says, You shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. One more time, I want you to pray. In fact, I'm not asking you to pray, I want you to shout. And I want you to shout grace. What is that mountain? You know it. Is it sickness in your body? Is it problems with your place of work? Is it problems in your family? Is it... What, what is it? Is it problems with children? What is it? I want you to think about that thing. And begin to shout grace to it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And so, please rise on your feet with me. You are going to shout grace to it. In the name of Jesus. Don't pray much prayer. If it's depression, you say, you depression. I shout grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Grace. In the name of Jesus. Grace. In the name of Jesus. You lack of job. Grace. In the name of Jesus. Grace. In the name of Jesus. Problems with my children. Grace. In the name of Jesus. Grace. In the name of Jesus. Grace. We shout grace to that mountain. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Grace. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.